Hello, Freedom Family. If you've taken many photos of the same shot like I did yesterday about this funny dog poop quote, how do you find the best one? We're going to use Heartbeat Photos, what you see behind me, to help you do that. Just hover over the thumbnails. This lets you easily find the one that you think is the best. In my opinion, this one is the best because this is a little angled and this one is got some reflection right here. So I'm going to put this one in the front because that's my favorite. How do you do this? If these are your photos, simply go to Heartbeat Photos, heartbeat.photos, or just type h.ki, then click Sign In with Google. Then just select your photos from your hard drive or your mobile phone. Here I'm going to select three photos, the same three I just showed you. It's uploading uh, behind me here. <laughs> I'm going to hide myself for a second so you can see it. OK, there they are uploading. Now I have to put myself back into the video. Come on, George, let's go. I'm on my laptop, so I have a bit limited space. Oh, actually, these are <laughs> different photos. OK, these are good photos as well. Uh, this is a good example as well. So here we took three photos of deer. They are two deer that were exploring our backyard, the place I'm staying when I'm visiting Canada. And again, you can just organize your photos to pick the best one by dragging and dropping to uh, help share this with your friends and family. Now, let me do this a little bit uh, better. So here I have three photos, the same three I mentioned, and here's a few more photos. We can hide the upload uh, box. And again, you can just hover over each one to see which one is better, and then pick your favorite. I like this one, put it to the, to the front, a little bit further. And uh, which one did I like? I like this one, put that one to the front. And how about these three? That one has a house on the left. This one looks good. So this is the chief. This is actually a rock wall in, uh, in Vancouver, uh, in Squamish, that people can climb, literally climb, uh, with safety harnesses and ropes, of course. It's a very long climb, but a lot of people do it. Anyway, I was taking this photo while we're driving past it from the car. This is my favorite photo of the chief. Now you can press G to go into grid view. That makes it easier to arrange your favorite photos. Press G again to go into regular view. And now I have my favorite three photos here and I can move these to another gallery or just delete these other ones. Now, let me show you how this works. When Oh, by the way, uh, if you didn't know the context of this poop, it's a famous quote of a philosophical question. If a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? It is a very famous philosophical thought experiment that raises the questions regarding existence. And if something happens and no one's there to witness it, does it matter? Well, in the context of poop, it certainly does matter because... Uh, it'll stick to the bottom of my shoe, even if no one is around to see it, if you don't scoop up your dog's poop. So that's why I took a photo of this. I thought it was a very funny uh, take on this famous, famous philosophical question. So how do you use this for all your photos? So again, uh, let me go to an incognito window so you can see this. Just type h.ki. That's the shortener we use to go to Heartbeat Photos, or type photos.h.ki, because we will have more than just photos in the future. And if you notice I'm typing photos.h.ki, it auto-completes. But let's say you have something you don't want, like this, photos.google.com. Why do we need that anymore? Just click the X, then it'll never appear when you are typing the first few letters of your URL, uh, it will be gone completely from your history. And anything else that is not necessary, you can just click the X and uh, it'll no longer be there. That's a quick tip I didn't even know about. So now if I type PHO, I only see the things I'm interested in. Okay, so use the X to prune your suggestions for URLs. So once you're here, either by typing heartbeat.photos or photos.h.ki or just h.ki. Click sign in with Google. You will use your own Google account. Now, I've already signed in, so I'm not going to sign in again. Once you've signed in, you will see an empty gallery 
where you can upload your photos to. So here is, for example, an empty gallery. This is what you would see. And then just go to your Windows Explorer and select a bunch of photos or your Mac Finder, or if you're doing this on your mobile, just you'll see them from your mobile phone's files. Drag and drop, that's it. And it'll upload everything just like Google Drive. It is inspired by Google Drive. The interface we built has a lot of the same um, usability uh, where you can drag and drop, you can click the folder once it's uploaded. Like for example here, it'll show you where the photo uh, exists. So if I click uh, this one, if I wanna see where did I upload this one with the, ah, there it is, with the orange. And it just keeps going in the background as, as the upload continues. Now, here we go. We have a bunch of photos. I took all of these in Vancouver while I was visiting. You can also hide the upload photos box. Even if it's not done uploading, it'll continue uploading in the background. But I want to organize these because this is not in the right order. So I can just move them around myself in this view. I can press Q to move the thumbnails to the different edges if I want to work in, in the vertical mode or if I want to work in a horizontal mode. Or I can press G for grid view. And this is the easiest one because you see a lot more photos and you can just put the ones that you want in the front. I just want the ones with me in the front. This was a cool one where my kids uh, took their shadow while on the ferry. This is my little dog poop one. I think I'll put that at the very beginning because it's one of my favorite lines. Oh, and this was a family of ducks. Maybe we'll put that after the family photo. So now let's take a look. I press G again and we have the pictures of me in the front, my girls, and a family of ducks followed by nature. Oh, this one should be maybe at the beginning of the nature series. Oh, and this is uh, rock climbing. We actually did some rock climbing in Vancouver. That's one of my daughters uh, trying to climb up a rock face. It was quite exciting. And I think this I'll end with this one. This is one of my favorite little nature photos of a small a waterfall in the forest. You don't get these things in Dubai, so that's why I was quite excited to see nature once again while visiting Canada. All right, Freedom Family, I hope this helps you better understand how to use Heartbeat Photos. It's a better way to view your photos. Give it a try. We launched it three days ago, and you can see that launch announcement right here. I made this video on youtube.com slash freedom behind me. Check it out. Heartbeat Photos 1.0 is here for you. And here is the video. And you can see it was published three days ago. And we've already got over 200 photos uploaded by you, Freedom Family. There have been a lot of people using Heartbeat Photos. Try it out yourself. We're going to build a lot more features to it. Or you can just watch this announcement video by clicking that eye up there. Or the link is down there in the description below as well to get familiarized with the product. Uh, or you can just watch this video again to get some additional tips. So Heartbeat Photos, what will it do for you beyond being a better way to, uh, to view your photos? It will help you make money, guys. How will it make you money? If you're a photographer, let's say you just like to take photos, other people who write articles or create videos will be able to use the photos you designate as available for monetization by others. If they use your photos and they make money on Heartbeat, then we will pay you, the photographer, a share of the revenue generated from those articles or videos published on Heartbeat. The whole point is, guys, if you don't want to do the whole creator journey, if you don't want to learn how to edit videos, how to write articles, blogs, how to take good photos to make nice pictures for your articles and blogs and videos, then just do what you want to do. Just be a writer. Just be a photographer. Just make videos. Let other people use your content in their productions and you get paid for it by doing nothing except what you love. That's the power of Heartbeat. We will do split payments for every piece of content that is monetized on Heartbeat to pay every creator who contributed to that article. If you have a collaborator for your writing or your videos, if you take photographs, you can specify how much to pay your lighting guy or your Photoshop guy. 
you choose the percentages to assign to each person, which is something YouTube doesn't support. With YouTube, what happens when you upload a video? YouTube pays one person, the person who uploaded the video. Or if there is a content ID match, like you use someone's music, YouTube gives all the revenue to the content ID owner, the guy who owns the music. Basically, they pay one person, and then you have to decide how to distribute those payments to everyone who's collaborated to create that content. Heartbeat fixes that problem by supporting split payments for every single person. If there's 100 people who've contributed to a very long essay, 100 people will get their share of the revenue from the monetization of that essay. That's one of the features of Heartbeat that I believe will help us stand out and give you a unique reason to use it over just YouTube. Now, we're not a YouTube competitor, guys. We encourage you to use Heartbeat and YouTube at the same time because we embed videos on YouTube or from YouTube on Heartbeat. Let me show you. Go to vi.ki, Viki, the Heartbeat Video Wiki. All of this content is on YouTube. So let's take, for example, the most popular TV series that I wrote. You can see this is an embedded YouTube video. But what I wrote is the things missing from YouTube, the, the key points. For example, Game of Thrones returns to number one and stays to number one. See what happened. It jumped to that point in the video. Let's say The Walking Dead overtakes Game of Thrones uh, temporarily. You can see The Walking Dead is at the top. It jumped to that point in the video. So as you write articles, you can create time codes that jump to the embedded video's moment so people can see the paragraph they are reading. This is a more powerful way to express yourself. Now on YouTube, of course, you have chapters, but who reads YouTube for articles? Nobody. YouTube has video descriptions full of follow me here links, so no one goes to a video description to read it. They go to a blog. Heartbeat Wiki will be the blog, a video wiki, and not just for your personal content, you can collaborate with others. You can create entire wikis with video clips on Heartbeat Wiki when it launches. It hasn't launched yet. This is a prototype, but you can check it out at vi.ki and see what's coming soon from the team of Heartbeat and the team of Freedom. Freedom is building Heartbeat, guys. This is our next BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goal. We're trying to create a platform, not just build on top of someone else's platform like YouTube or Instagram or Facebook. Heartbeat is the platform on which you can build. Others can create businesses around Heartbeat when we've added monetization and blogging and video clipping. Video clipping is coming next. Heartbeatmoments.com is where you can go to download the Chrome extension that is currently in testing that we plan to launch later this month for everyone to use. And I'll make a video announcing it as I did for Heartbeat Photos 1.0. And this will let you collect video clips while watching any YouTube video. Just press H, the H key. You now understand what H.ki means? H key, this is the hot key you press in order to create a moment, a favorite moment. Same with on the photos. Let's say I really like this photo, just press H. And that adds your photo to your favorites. And where does that go? Right here, my favorites, photo. So you can see I've already collected all my favorite photos here. And you can do the same. Now, if you want to see more details about a photo, you can just push this little down arrow here. The down arrow gives you a description. Talent hits a target no one else can hit. Genius hits a target no one else can see. This is a very powerful statement, in my opinion, and one of my favorite photos. So you first start with the talent photo, and then you add the little genius and very hard to see, just to emphasize the fact that it's only the geniuses that can hit targets no one else can see. Again, do this for your own photos. Of course, you'll have different favorites, but then Heartbeat will let you share with others. You have a visibility option. You can choose to set a video. Um, you, you can choose the visibility of every photo. 
so that you can say which ones are public, which ones are unlisted, and which ones are private. And I'll show you how that works. So here I am. I, I can just press Z, by the way, uh, to show and hide thumbnails. So let me go back to my gallery with uh, uh, George in Vancouver. George in Vancouver. Here we go. So let's say I, I like this photo and I want to share it with everybody. I just go right click, set the visibility to public. When it's public, everyone can see it. Everyone can search for it. It becomes visible to the world. What's the difference between public and unlisted? Well, with it, if it's unlisted, you control the distribution. It's only visible to the people who have the link that you've shared with. It'll never show up in a heartbeat search or it'll never be a suggested photo when viewing other people's galleries. So unlisted is like you control who sees it. And then private just means your eyes only, meaning only you can see it. If someone else has the link, they still can't see it. And this is exactly like YouTube. The same meaning of public, unlisted, and private for a YouTube video is for a heartbeat photo or any other content on heartbeat as we build it. And of course, you can also share the photo on Facebook, Twitter, or just copy this link and then sending this link will uh, share it with someone as well. So for example, if I want to share this rock climbing link, I just copy my URL here. I'll go to an incognito browser. So I'm not signed in here. And I can just paste it. And this is what a person would see. They would see the video or the video, the photo. They can zoom in with the mouse wheel. They can explore it by just hovering with the mouse, or they can go to another photo because it contains the gallery of photos. When you share a photo with Heartbeat, you don't get just a single photo, you get a playlist of photos, a gallery, so that you can put relevant photos together and share that with your friends and family. Now, let's say you move this photo to a different gallery. The, you don't have to share a different link. With the power of Heartbeat, you can change your gallery around and you never have to go back and edit the links you've shared or embedded on blogs because Heartbeat automatically updates that gallery to the latest collection of photos that you've defined to be around that photo. So there's a lot of features that we've built into the platform that we believe you will find useful. And this is the not signed in experience. Look, you can still click all the buttons. You can hide the thumbnails. You can go full screen. You can choose fit, fill, or one-to-one. -one. All of these features still work in the signed out experience. So you can use it as an anonymous user. Now, you, of course, you can sign in, then you can upload your own photos, organize them, create galleries. We have a lot more functions. But things like this down arrow, so you can see all the image uh, details. You can download the image here. You can share it even though it's not your image. That's the whole point of Heartbeat. You can share it even the ones that you've been shared with. And you have a right-click option where you can rotate the image. So you can rotate the image by pressing R or right-click, uh, sorry, right-click and rotate. Anyway, go to the settings menu. You can see a lot more features that you have. Uh, you can have background effects, you can have transition effects, and you have keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts show you all the hotkeys. <laughs> that you have at your disposal. Once you're familiar with them, you'll be an expert moving thumbnails around, rotating images, and zooming in, and zooming out, and so on. Oh, by the way, when you zoom in, you can just take, you can share exactly this moment just by holding the control key. You can move the mouse into the address bar so you can copy this and share it with someone. So let me sh show that to you. I've now just, taken that same link, put it into another unsigned in window, and look, you have the same photo at that exact moment. Now, if you click and drag, you can explore the photo. Or if you click on other thumbnails, of course, you can go to the other thumbnails. But uh, that's another unique feature of Heartbeat Photos. When you're zoomed in, just like Google Maps, you can share the zoomed in portion, and it'll show exactly that portion of your image to whoever clicks the link that you've shared. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll stop here. There's a lot more I could go into, but this video is getting pretty long. And I'm still in Vancouver, so I apologize for the slightly lower audio quality. 
I'll be back in Dubai soon. And uh, also the lighting here isn't perfect. You can see a bit of a shadow on my face, but I work with what I have, guys, right? <laughs> All right. Until the next episode, Heartbeat Photos, go to www.heartbeat.photos or just photos.h.ki and try it out. If you have feedback, just click this little hamburger menu and click send feedback. That's where we go. That's where you can go to tell us what you like, what you don't like, and what we need to improve for Heartbeat Photos. All right. Till the next episode, I'm George, and you've been watching The George Show, George in Vancouver. Oh, and the link to my gallery is down there in the description below if you want to see the photos of George in Vancouver. Basically, everything you see here, uh, you, can, you can explore and look at yourself. I'll leave it with my favorite nature photo here, zoomed out in theater mode. Oh, by the way, T turns on theater mode, hides all the interface. You can also click the button down here uh, in the bottom right corner to do the same. All right. Till the next episode, enjoy nature. See you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.